Welcome back to our third and final segment. We're still exploring the kinetic molecular theory, but we also want to try and link the evidence that is brought forward by diffusion as well as Brown and motion in terms of describing, uh, uh, you know, the particle nature of matter, right? Having said that, um, the, the, the kinetic molecular theory, you know, as a model, uh, it generally gives us a description of the three states of matter at a microscopic level, as we would have seen uh, in, the, in, the, in the second segment when we looked at the simulation uh, involving a fixed mass of a gas heated, saying that, okay, this uh, 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 form of matter, which was a gas, ex 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 is now is composed of particles, okay? And also these particles are actually uh, in a constant state of motion. But now, the, I, with respect to the kinetic molecular theory, we can look at it in terms of the distance uh, which uh, actually affects the spaces between the particle, okay? So the distance or, or the space between particles uh, is, is something that is specific uh, to the kinetic molecular theory in terms of the three different states of matter. We can also talk about it in terms of the movement and the amount of energy. So yes, all forms of matter are in a constant state of motion, but it, depending on you know the the, the 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 state or the phase in which that substance uh, uh, is found, uh, then there will obviously be the, the difference to uh, uh, the extent at which these uh, particles move uh, with respect to the kinetic energy. We're saying that the faster the, the gas particles move, they have got a comparatively greater amount of kinetic energy than a liquid as well as a solid, okay? We can also talk about the forces that exist between particles. Stronger forces, meaning liquid spaces, okay? So the, 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 the strength of the force will obviously affect the distance between the particles. What are we saying in a nutshell? We are saying if, uh, let's say for argument's sake, in a solid, the forces that exist between the particles are very strong compared to those of a liquid and a gas. Now, if the forces are stronger, it means the distance between the particles will also be smaller. So if the distance is smaller, it means that these particles are closely packed and hence it would relate to, you know, a physical property like you, you say that, you know, solids have got a definite shape. All that is because of the particle nature, the strength of, strength of the forces that exist between the particles, which also influences the distance between the particles, the packaging, and then also you can talk of the shape as well, okay? So compressibility is uh, uh, also related to the amount of space, which is also influenced by the forces, okay? So all these, you know, dimensions of the kinetic molecular theory are actually, you know, link each other with each other very well, okay? But the most exciting one or the interesting one that I want us to uh, look at more in detail is the pressure exerted by a substance in as far as, you know, uh, the kinetic molecular theory. We are saying that pressure of a liquid uh, of a solid and a gas is due to the movement of the particles, okay? Right, so now we want to look at each one of them, uh, uh, you know, in turn to say, okay, how does pressure arise in a solid, in a liquid, as well as in a gas, right? Okay, okay, so pressure as, you know, a, a, a physical quantity is actually force exerted per unit area. So pressure would actually say to us that, okay, we ask ourselves, how much force is exerted on a surface, okay, and how big is that surface area? So if, say for argument's sake, uh, we can make an example, if you press with the palm of your hand, okay, using whatever force, okay, what happens is there is greater space on which we exert this force, meaning the pressure will be less, because we are saying that if, say for argument's sake, we use the tip, the tip, you use the same force, this will have a, a comparatively greater pressure because there is a smaller surface area on which the force acts. Hence, we are saying pressure is actually force applied per unit area, okay? And uh, we'll talk more about, you know, pressure at, at a later stage, but uh, in terms of calculations and whatnot, but it's not our focus for today, okay? So in solids, uh, uh, to be precise, uh, you know, a solid exerts a downward force on a surface uh, on which it is in contact or it rests. So if, say, for argument's sake, uh, we had a block, okay? So the pressure uh, of this block is actually the force that this block exerts. And this can be due to, you know, uh, let's say the, the, the gravitational force pulling this 
block downwards. It's resting on a surface. And then how big the surface of contact is, it will affect the pressure. So the greater the area of contact on which the block is uh, uh, you know, resting, it would mean that we would have uh, a lesser pressure. But if there is a smaller area, if we have the same block uh, placed vertically, uh, uh, you know, if we erect it like this, meaning that this area, surface area of contact, uh, 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 you know, is, is smaller. This would correspond to greater pressure of a solid, okay? So this pressure will remain constant in as far as solids are concerned, right? Okay, what about in liquid substances? Okay, so in liquids, due to these particles sliding past each other, this uh, relates to the kinetic energy of the particles. So always think about the kinetic energy when it comes to the movement of particles, okay? But characteristically, in liquids, we know that these particles are sliding past each other, okay? And the movement is also random, which uh, results in this, uh, uh, this liquid taking the shape of the container. So the pressure in liquids is actually in all directions. Why? Because the movement of particles is random. So there is random movement of particles, okay? So there is no sense of direction, okay? So the random movement um, um, of particles results in the pressure of a liquid in all directions, okay? So as you can see in the illustration there, uh, the pressure on this block inside a liquid is from all the possible directions. Why? Because these particles, as they slide through past each other, that movement is actually random, okay? Right, and then for a gas, okay, we managed to look at the simulation just to show us that, you know, if these particles are moving haphazard uh, or randomly, they move in all directions, and pressure in a gas is actually, it arises as a result of the particles making that substance moving and colliding with each other in the walls of the container. So if we're thinking in terms of kinetic energy, you know, a, 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 a gas that is compressed at, at, at a high temperature, it suggests that the amount of energy that these particles have for that random movement is actually greater. So at a higher temperature, we're actually experiencing a greater pressure because of number one, the high speed of random movement of particles and also high frequency of collisions between the particles themselves as well as the walls of the container, right? So pressure in a gas would actually be uh, thought of in a different way because it has to do with the frequency of collisions. So we, when we talk about frequency of collisions, it's a very interesting uh, 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 um, you know, concept. Uh, it's, we are asking ourselves how many collisions okay uh, on, 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 you know, in a given time uh, you know, on a surface. So if there is a, a, a higher frequency of collision, between the particles and the walls of the container, then there will be higher pressure. So this is frequency of collisions. It's another angle of, of which we can uh, use to actually uh, approach this and try to understand exactly what is happening, right? Okay, so temperature is a physical quantity. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we can measure. We'd have done that when we, 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 we did the heating curve, let's say, of water. We try to understand how temperature changes, but what exactly is, is this the idea around, you know, the, the, the quantity of temperature? The temperature, does it suggest how hot or cold something is? But we want to relate this to the kinetic molecular theory of matter, okay? So temperature is a measure of how cold or hot something is, and we use uh, uh, actually a thermometer. So a thermometer is the instrument, okay? So a thermometer is the instrument for measuring temperature. And then temperature in itself is a physical quantity, right? So temperature is the physical quantity, while the thermometer is actually a, an instrument that is used to measure this quantity. So the common unit, okay, it's not only that, we've got the degrees Celsius, we also have the Kelvins, we've discussed that, um, you know, as, as, as time goes by, right? So that's, that's, that's what uh, temperature is all about, but with respect to the kinetic molecular theory, okay? Um, particles of matter are always in a state of motion. We understand that, that all forms of matter are in a continuous state of motion, and this state of motion is actually random, okay? 
right? Because this is what gives rise to pressure in, in liquids as well as gases, right? But also, the kinetic energy for the particles is not the same. Now, kinetic energy as a, as, 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 as a quantity, we are saying that, uh, we're asking ourselves, uh, how much energy do these particles have for movement? So particles that move faster have got greater kinetic energy than those that are moving slowly. But you know, in all the three forms of states of matter, particles are in a constant state of motion. So in, in, in essence, what are we saying? There are no particles of matter that do not possess any kinetic energy. So all forms of matter, their particles are in a state of motion, but the state of motion will differ. Suppose we have a sample of a substance, let's say it could be a gas for argument's sake, and then all these particles are moving random. The speed at which they are moving is not the same. Some have got high kinetic energy, some have got relatively low you know, kinetic energy. But as a result, we are saying that the, 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 the amount of energy that each one of them carries is actually not the same. Hence, we talk of the average kinetic energy, right? Okay, so what does it say? So the temperature of a substance with respect to the kinetic molecular theory is actually the measure of the average kinetic energy of particles of a substance. Okay, that's the main idea. Right, so the change in the state of matter is something that we've managed to look into and we agreed that when we hit the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the particles of a gas or of any substance, the, what happens is they gain kinetic energy, but some still will have a comparatively greater amount of energy, some lower, but when we talk about the average kinetic energy, it's something that has got a direct relation to the temperature of a, a substance. Okay, so temperature of a substance is actually directly proportional to the average kinetic energy. Okay, so temperature is directly proportional to the average EK, okay? EK will be our kinetic energy. So at a higher temperature, the average kinetic energy is also greater and vice versa, right? So that's the main idea. So when a substance is heated, these particles, they gain more energy, they move even faster. As a result, there's an increase in the average kinetic energy, of which the opposite is true when the substance is cooled, right? So that's the, these are the main ideas in as far as the kinetic molecular theory. So what are, are the three things that we take out uh, from this discussion? Number one, that all particles, all forms of matter rather, they consist of particles. These particles are in a constant state of motion, hence they've got kinetic energy. And the average kinetic energy of particles is an indication of temperature. Those are the three uh, main ideas that we take home uh, based on today's discussion. So that's the time that we have for today just to go through the kinetic molecular theory. Hopefully it makes a lot of sense and we can make these very important links uh, you know, and try to understand exactly what happens at a microscopic level. From myself, Temba Nube, cheers and bye-bye for now.